Imagine a world where your infrastructure scales automatically and effortlessly. Your data is secure and your AI models are training themselves. And that's exactly what the cloud computing offers in the year 2025. But the problem is that all these AWS, Azure, GCP, they're really fighting for your attention. But how would you as a customer would choose between all of these cloud providers? Well, the answer is not that complex. The answer is based on their services. Let me tell you that the cloud computing, my friends, is just like ordering the takeout food where you really want to have the tastiest, the most affordable and the fastest delivery. But with so many options lying down like a buffet with so many services, it can be a really tough decision to take. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the comparison between the top dishes from all these biggest cloud kitchens, Amazon, AWS and Google GCP. And I will really help you choose the perfect cloud meal for your tech appetite. So let's get started with this video. But before that, a quick reminder that in the last video, we have already covered 13 very important cloud services under the category of compute services, database services, storage services and the AI services. And in all these categories are covered the top services that any cloud provider offers like the virtual machines, the EC2, the Lambda, the Azure GCP functions and not just that the storage services, the Kubernetes. So loads of critical services were covered in the previous video. Please do check out that. And for now, let's start on with this video. And today we are going to start this video with the networking services very important services because you absolutely cannot build any cloud application with the networking services. So let's head on to that and we will start with the virtual network or the VPCs. And why do you need all these networking services? Well, of course, very simple reason. These managed private networks are used to connect all your cloud resources in a very secure manner. And from the Azure side, we have Azure Virtual Network. From the AWS, we have AWS VPCs. And from the Google side, we have Google Virtual Private Cloud. What are the use cases? Very important. Once again, please understand the use cases very well because I really believe it's not just the theoretical knowledge. Of course, they have its importance, but it is actually the use case that really help you understand where to put that service to use in your application or in your company. So let's understand what are the use cases for these networking services. So first of all, setting the secure network infrastructure between all your services and the virtual machine. Secondly, communication of the cloud resources with the internet. And thirdly, we have communication with the on-premises resources. Then fourthly, we have filtering the network traffic. Fifth is routing the network traffic. And the sixth one is integration with the cloud services. So those are the networking services, but we have other very prominent service in this network category and that is the load balancer. And I'm sure you know what is the load balancer, but let me give you a very brief description here. And yes, please do not miss to watch this video here. Here I have taken 11 parameters to compare Microsoft Azure, Amazon AWS and Google GCP. And this video will really help you understand which cloud provider is most suitable for you to choose as the career option. And I have also told in this video which cloud provider I am using for my projects and the reason behind the same. This will really help you understand how to choose a cloud provider. So that's why this is a must watch video for anyone who is starting to build the cloud career. So load balancing services, my friends, they are used to distribute the traffic to the resource very efficiently. And from the Azure side, we have Azure load balancer. From the AWS side, we have elastic load balancer. And from the Google side, we have Google cloud load balancing. Of course, use case wise, rather simple to understand. It is used for distributing the incoming traffic to the backend services or the backend servers or the application for high availability. And not just that, my friends, with the load balancer comes a very related uh, concept and that is the DNS services. What are the DNS services? Well, the DNS uh, services are used for managing the domain name resolution and the routing traffic. So a DNS uh, service, it actually looks like a I would say a phone book uh, for the internet and I can tell you without the DNS services you probably would typing something like 172.16.254.1 in the internet browser to find out any website but now what is the better option well how you write www.google.com and just reach to the google that is the best option and that's how the humans work we are not very good with the 
abstract numbers. So that is why this is the DNS service. It really resolves or connects these uh, IP addresses to a good name of the website. That is why we use the DNS services. From the Azure side, we have Azure Traffic Manager. From the AWS side, we have AWS Route S3. From the Google side, we have Google Cloud DNS. Use case wise, I already told you they are used to manage the DNS routing for the websites and the application. So those were three very important services under the networking category. The first one was the virtual network. Then we talked about the load balancer and the third one was the DNS services. Let's move on to the next category and that is monitoring services. And here first we will talk about the monitoring and the diagnostics services for the resources, for the application, for the infrastructure. These services, they really offers a comprehensive monitoring solution for collecting, analyzing and responding to the monitoring data from your cloud resources and your on-premises resources as well. And from the Azure side, we have Azure Monitor. From the Amazon side, we have Amazon CloudWatch. And from the Google side, we have Google Stack Driver. The use case is monitoring application performance and detect the anomalies. Then we have one more service in this category, the monitoring services, and that is the insight services. And these services are like real time monitoring and analytics of the application performance and log the data. From the Azure side, we have Azure Application Insights. From Amazon side, we have Amazon CloudWatch Logs. Then from the Google side, we have Google Cloud Logging. And use case is very simple, tracking log and metrics to monitor the application health. And these services are extensible analytic services that really helps you understand the performance and usage of your web application. Now the third service that I want to talk about in this monitoring category is the security centers or services like that. And these services are the centralized security management and threat protection services. And they really help you streamline security operations with the automation and continuous and you know security best practices and these services they really help you understand what are the misconfiguration in your cloud resources or the cloud services so from the azure side we have azure security center from the aws side we have aws security hub then from the google side we have google cloud security command and use case wise these services they really help you in monitoring the security and compliance across your cloud resources and now that we are talking about the security, why not actually talk about the security as a category in itself? And here, let's start with the identity services. So identity services, my friends, of course, they help you manage the identity and the access control on your cloud resources. And from the Microsoft side, we have Microsoft Intro ID, which was earlier known as Azure Active Directory. From the AWS, simply we have AWS IAM, which is the identity and access management. And similar is the GCP case, identity and access management service. And looking at the use case, well, these services, they really help you manage the user permissions and help the user to securely access the various cloud resources. So you really want to use these services when you want to decide which user should access which service and to what level so that is why we use the im services then under the security category we also have secure services that help you maintain your secrets your passwords and from the azure side we have azure keyboard from the aws side we have aws kms which is the key management service and from the google side we have google cloud key management service and as a use case these services they really help you maintain your passwords in a very secure way not just that they help you maintain the api keys the secrets the certifications for your encryption and decryption so really wonderful services in case you really want to centrally manage all these secret uh, management and the passwords then the third category is I think I can talk about the firewalls. So although this is related to the networking services, but I kept it here because I thought this is more like a network security service. And these services, they really help you control, you know, the incoming and the outgoing traffic. So 
that's why security of the network and from the azure side we have simply the azure firewalls and from the aws side we have aws waf services which is the web application firewall and from the google side we have google cloud armor and the use case for all these firewall services the networking firewall it they really helps you uh, protect your application from the threats and the malicious traffic so great service to in case you are protecting your applications from the outer traffic then my friends there is a very important category these days and that is the content delivery category and i would start this with services from the azure side i would say this is azure cdn from the aws side we have aws cloud front and then from the google side we have google cloud cdn and why do you use the cdn services well the cdn or the content delivery network services they help you cache and delivers the network globally faster uh, and it reduces the latency for your you know delivery of the files your video files your images your voice files maybe so that is why we use the content delivery services and also as i just mentioned they offer you scalability not just that uh, load balancing they help you load balancing because the cdn services they help you intelligently distribute the traffic to the most available and responsive servers uh, and this really prevents the overload to the applications then security uh, and not just that the most important i would say is the user experience use case is very simple it really helps you deliver the content images video files chat uh, voice files uh, quickly across the globe to the user enhancing their experience and then one more service that is actually used as a global service for your application acceleration and load balancing from the azure side we have azure front door from the aws we have aws global accelerator and from the google side we have google load balancer and these are the services that are you know really enhance the application performance and availability for the global users then there is a very important service my friends everyone talks about it devops uh, of course this is very important in case you are moving towards faster delivery of your or the faster releases and the rollouts very important services and i think most of the applications most of the companies are into devops these days so it really makes a lot of sense to understand these services and just to give you a very brief description the devops services are actually there to enable the continuous integration and the delivery of the services for automating the software development life cycle and these services my friends are fully managed uh, continuous delivery services they really help you automate your release pipelines and they also allow you to build test deploy into a test or production environment and from the azure side we have azure devops now there are multiple uh, smaller or sub services under the azure devops as a umbrella and uh, these are like azure boards azure pipelines azure repos github advanced security for the azure devops azure test plans azure artifacts there is a plethora of services under the devops category in microsoft azure and same for the uh, aws as well aws here we have aws code pipeline and under the aws code pipeline we also have aws code deploy and aws code commit so various services it's not possible to describe each of these services but i will leave some links in the description box so you can further self study coming to the google side we have google cloud build and under this google cloud build we have other related services like uh, tecton we also have google cloud deploy we have google kubernetes engine and the use case as i just mentioned all these devops services they really help you build test deployment of the pipelines for your application well i would like to mention ci cd here so ci is continuous integration and cd is continuous deployment so please read out that terminology very important these days and under this devops category i would also like to associate or link the kubernetes uh, services why the reason is very simple that the kubernetes services are now you know so much integrated with devops for the faster uh, release and development of the application that is why i have kept it here as well 
and from the Azure side we have Azure Container Services and from the Amazon side we have Amazon EKS then from the Google side we have Google Kubernetes Engine or GKE and of course these services they really help you run the containerized application without the complex orchestration and finally my friends I want to talk about the messaging services and messaging services my friends they they provide you a platform for connecting the application and services with the queues and the topics from the azure side we have azure service bus from the aws we have aws sns which is amazon simple notification service and from the google side we have google pops up pops up is i have used it in multiple projects very good service and use case wise well these services they really help you decouple microservices and ensure the reliable messaging delivery then in the same messaging services there is one more thing i want to talk about those are like uh, services like event grid and these services they help you uh, these are actually event routing services to integrate the application and manage the real events in in real time so from the azure side we have azure event grids and from the amazon side we have amazon sqs which is amazon simple queue service and from the google side we have google cloud services and as far as the use case is concerned you can use these services to build event driven architecture and routing events to appropriate systems or services which are capable to handle all these services and now that we are talking about all these services my friends i have taken all these categories based on my experience but i am sure that you must be also using some services in your application uh, so why not share that with uh, everyone so please you know tell what are the services that you are using the most in your application your day-to-day -day life with the cloud applications let me know in the comment section and in case some of you really want to discuss any service uh, and why we use that and you want me to take more use cases more elaboration on the same let me know i would be really happy to read your comment and reply to them so friends in this second part and in the first part in total we have covered 28 super critical cloud services that you can use to build your next application and choose between microsoft azure amazon aws and google gcp and the service the categories that we covered are compute services database services storage services ai services networking services monitoring services security services content delivery devops services and messaging services Whoa, that was a huge list and this is just the tip of the iceberg in the cloud computing. There are countless other services, other possibilities for you to explore and I'm really sure that you are ready to put your newly found knowledge about all these services to a real test. So please head on to the description section and there you will find loads of other links which can really enhance your knowledge. And you can use, you can understand all these services, do some self-study and try to use these services in your next project. And yes, I will also be bringing the Azure Zero to Hero series. And in this series, we will try to understand the Microsoft Azure from the very beginning, the fundamental level. And we will try to move on to the intermediate or the advanced level. Loads of practicals will be there and you will be actually using all these services, many of these in these practicals and the projects covered in that series and please do not forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and i request you to please at least put one single comment from each of you it really helps us understand whether you're liking the content what is the next video that you want so one comment from each of you and that's all for today i will see you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching